So for um, number 21, they want us to take the area bounded between these two curves. Um, so I've put it in a graphing calculator, and we can see here that the area bounded between them is this little chunk here in yellow. And they want us to rotate it about the line, um, actually about the y-axis. So when we rotate it about the y-axis, what is going to happen is we're going to have these little chunks here, and they get rotated like so to make a cylinder. And so um, this volume is basically going to be the sum of all these cylinders and so on. So let me just um, erase that last one so it doesn't get too crowded here. Uh, let's see, yeah. So we can see here that we're going to be summing up these cylinders. And when we open up these cylinders, they're going to have, um, it's like an infinitely thin sheet of paper that gets wrapped around the y-axis. And now this sheet here, it does have an area, right? So our volume is going to be the sum of all these areas from 0 all the way out to x is equal to 2. Therefore, we can say that our volume is going to be the sum from 0 to 2 of ax dx. And it is ax dx because this area definitely depends on x, right? Like the further um, that we go along the x-axis, the wider that our cylinder is going to become. And we're summing them up horizontally, so it is definitely a sum across the x-axis. So all we have to do now here is to, um, is to think about how this area is going to be like, right? We need to express it in terms of x. Um, and so the, the area of any rectangle is just base times height. Um, and we can see here that the height is going to be this little chunk. And the base, let me do that in a different color. And the base is going to be the circumference of the cylinder, like so. Um, and so the height, of this part in blue, is just, it goes from zero to wherever it touches this curve, right? So for example, here in blue, it goes from zero to the value of that curve. So we can see here that this curve, um, x e to the minus x, it is the curve that is going to define the height of our cylinders. Um, so this here is x times e to the minus x. And let's think about what the the base is going to be. Well, the base, as we can see here, is just a circumference, right? The circumference of the cylinder. And now any circumference is just given by 2 pi r. Um, but the problem is that we don't want it in r. We want to be able to express this radius in terms of x, right? Because we are summing these up as a function of x. And we can see here that basically the radius is going to go from the center all the way out to this point here. Um, that was poorly done. Let me redraw this. Maybe I'm going to zoom it in. All right, so it's going to be from the center all the way out to wherever math on my x-axis, right? So, for example, if I were at x is equal to 1, the radius here would be 1. If I were at x is equal to 2, the radius of that, you know, cylinder would be equal to 2, and so on. So that value, the radius, is just wherever I'm at on my x-axis. And therefore, the circumference in this case is 2 pi x. Um, so let me erase this here. So then this base here is 2 pi x. And we can see here then that the area, area is equal to base times height. So it's equal to 2 pi x times x e to the minus x. Or... 2 pi times x squared e to the minus x. So once we have an expression um, for our area, we can go ahead and put that into our integral, right? So the volume is going to be the sum from 0 to 2. I'm going to put the 2 pi outside because it's a constant, and that is going to be the integral of x squared times e to the minus x dx. Um, and now they want us to evaluate this integral using a calculator. So I'm going to plug that into my, um, I'm using the calculator symbol lab, right? So sim, symbol lab, yeah. Uh, I like to use it to calculate my definite integrals. So when I plug this into my calculator, it gives me approximately 4.06300. And that's what I get when I take this area and I revolve it around the y-axis.